This story is called The Seashore Noisy Book. It was written by Margaret Wise Brown. She was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. She was a college athlete, so when she owned dogs later on, she could run with them and keep up with them. Her most famous book, you probably know, is called Good Night Moon, and she wrote over a 100 books for children. She also was an editor who helped other people write their books for children. Her partner doing the pictures in this book was Leonard Weisgard. He was born in Connecticut, although he lived most of his childhood in England. He won the Caldecott Award for his illustrations uh, in a book called The Little Island. He also partnered with Margaret Wise Brown for that book. And then he lived the rest of his life in Denmark. Muffin was a little dog with sharp ears. There was nothing he didn't hear. He could even hear the rain falling. Muffin had heard the trucks roaring through the city and the birds whistling in the country. He thought he had heard everything, but he had never heard the sea. Then one day, Muffin went to sea on a big sailboat. Ho, 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 said the captain of the boat. We'll make a little sailor out of Muffin. Muffin's nose tasted salty when he licked it. All around him was the sea. Wherever he looked, as far as he could see, there was cold water and a big sky. Muffin could taste the sea. Muffin could see the sea. Muffin could feel the sea, and he could smell the sea. But could Muffin hear the sea? What was that? White birds were flying in the sky. And way off across the water he heard... What was that? Then a big ocean liner went by and blew all its whistles. How was that? And a sailboat sailed by. But could Muffin hear that? Then slowly a gray wetness came in the air. And Muffin couldn't see very far. What was that grayness? Far off in the fog, Muffin could hear. What was that? And he could hear lapping, slapping, slap, lap, lap against the side of the boat. What was that? Then suddenly, very close, on the other side of the boat, he heard... And from a nearby island, he heard... What was that? Then he heard... What was that noise? And he heard a foghorn. How was that noise again? And then he heard a flutter of little bird's wings. For when the big noises stop, you can hear the little noises. When the fog was gone, and the sun was shining down on the sea, Muffin went ashore and walked along the beach. First, he found a jellyfish lying in the sand. Could Muffin hear that? Then he met a snail sliding down a rock. 
Could Muffin hear that? In a pool, in a pool, under a rock, Muffin found a starfish. Could Muffin hear that? Then Muffin found the big seashell. He sniffed all around it. He pushed it with his paw. Then he poked his nose inside the shell. And that was when he heard the noise. What was that soft, low noise? It was the sound of the sea. Muffin was so busy listening to the noise in the seashell, he did not hear the great scuttling crab coming down the beach. Then the crab scuttled up and nearly pinched Muffin's little foot. But Muffin grabbed the old crab by the back and threw him in the sea. Then Muffin took a big drink of seawater. But he didn't like it. Why was that? So he walked along in the warm, soft sand. And he saw more crabs and pink shells and white shells and jellyfish and an old brown bottle. At sundown, Muffin heard the dinner bell. So he went back on the boat, and they had crab soup for supper. Then it was night. It was night, and Muffin didn't hear a thing but the gentle lapping of waves around the boat. The moon and the stars shone down on the sea, and you could see their light on the waters. But could Muffin hear that? The fish swam slowly about the sea, but could Muffin hear that? And lobsters crawled into lobster pots down in the depths of the sea. But could Muffin hear that? And a giant shark swam round and round. But could Muffin hear that? And a swordfish. But could Muffin hear that? And some little tiny fish. But could Muffin hear that? And all around under the boat were starfish and barnacles and flounders, and periwinkles, and whales. But could Muffin hear that? Then in the morning they went fishing. Flip-flop, the captain caught a fish. Flip-flop, flip-flop. It jumped on the bottom of the boat. It was a mackerel. Flip-flop, flip-flop. Muffin caught a fish. Flip-flop, flip-flop. It jumped on the bottom of the boat. It was a flounder. Flip-flop, flip-flop. The captain caught another fish. It was a codfish. Then all of a sudden there was a big splashing in the water near the boat. What could it be? It was not a whale. Was it the sun falling out of the sky? No. Was it a walrus blowing through his whiskers? No. Was it a seahorse galloping? Uh, no. Was it a little shrimp? No. What do you think it was? It was Muffin, swimming and splashing in the sea. Ho, 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 said the captain as he pulled Muffin out of the water. I think I've caught a dogfish this time. Ho, 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 ho. And all the fish kept swimming. And somewhere at your house or apartment, you might have memories of when you got to go to the ocean, like Muffin did. You might have seashells. You might have little pretend toys or real bits of shell and claw. And this is a picture of Margaret Wise Brown with one of her little dogs. 
I think this dog looks a lot like Muffin. And that's a good way to end this book written by Margaret Wise Brown with all the pictures drawn by Leonard Weisgard. The Seashore Noisy Book.